Well, hello. Uh, this is a, a review of this particular instructional video that I posted here. Um, I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a short review of uh, the video uh, that what's on the video that's located at Vimo. At the end of this video, I will show you how to purchase a video. Reading uh, armatures for both the uh, horse, the uh, dog, and the human. And the reason I uh, chose to do one of the uh, dog and the uh, horse is because uh, animals uh, are different than humans in creating armatures and you have to know how to do it. And once you learn the basics of creating armatures for uh, animals, then you can uh, pretty much make it for any animal that you want to choose. Uh, it's just a matter of having the basic. Uh, here I am uh, doing the uh, horse armature and uh, I show you uh, pretty much uh, how to get it started and all that with the uh, uh, a simple small uh, sculpture of a uh, horse and uh, I'm using baling wire, which is a uh, wire you can get at a hardware store, and uh, it's a thin steel wire that uh, comes in a huge roll, and it's uh, about under seven dollars for a, enough wire to last you forever. Uh, here I'm uh, basically just uh, showing you how to attach the legs once uh, we create the uh, armature for the legs and how to center it between the uh, the uh, breastbone and between the two uh, shoulders of the uh, armature for the legs. And now I'm going to attach the rear leg uh, to the uh, horse armature using electrician's tape. I show you how to come up with uh, the shaping of the armatures for the legs, uh, where all the joints are, how to make them proportional to the actual uh, size uh, animal that you're doing, whether it's a horse or a dog or a bison or a whatever. Uh, you, you have to have the proportions and then you have to have an armature that I'm showing here as being flexible, one that can uh, you can adjust the uh, position of the shoulder blade uh, as well as the, uh, the movement of the leg and such as that. Now I'm going to go on to showing what I'm going to do with this armature. Horse armature. Finished making three armatures of horses. I need to get the board. I'm going to mount them on and have to decide. So I try to show you how, basically how to uh, find uh, your leg movements of the animal. You have to have it uh, match the actual movements of animals. And then I start to uh, show you how to set up a project, this, uh, uh, a set up a, a design for your movement of your animals and such. I'm going to Try to line it up here. Now you can take each one of these clays and put it on directly on your sculpting stand or your board that you sculpt on, and you can work on each horse individually. An episode in time. These horses are a moment in time. Okay, for the dog, I basically go through the same uh, method of uh, research that you do for the horse, uh, searching for uh, dog anatomy and uh, bone structure and different breeds. And, and uh, it, it depends on the breed of dog that you want to do. Um, it all comes down to basically the same uh, type of uh, making an armature for uh, both a uh, small dog as well as a big dog using baling wire once again and it's basically uh, the same method that you use in creating the uh, horse armature. The basic uh, dog armature and uh, 
from this point you can design your the movement of the dog uh, how he's going to be either sitting or running you have all the basic joints that you need uh, to help you uh, with your uh, armature and uh, the guide for how big of a rib cage to put on them and all that stuff. All right, let's go on to the human. Next, measurements than a male. This is a male skeleton. This is a female drawing. Try to find a female skeleton you can't in the art books. They just don't have them. Uh, they're, the males dominate, and that's uh, a sad state of affairs. But that's the way life is in the art world. I go into proportions. Everything is figured out in proportions, both in animals and in humans. But in humans, it's all by head measurements. And uh, I talk about that here, showing you how to use a pair of calipers to work out uh, your head measurements for the different uh, uh, size person you're doing, such as an old person, which is going to be smaller than a full-grown uh, young adult. Uh, I talk about uh, the different areas that you have to look out for as far as uh, uh, anatomy points and such as that. And then I start showing you how to make the armature itself. Here I show you how to make that baling wire, which is a weak wire, and I try to show you how to make it into a stronger uh, stiffer wire, one that you can actually make uh, larger sculptures with. And uh, now your wire is stronger, it can hold the shape better, it can hold more of a weight, and uh, the uh, wound wire will keep the clay from sliding down the. Uh, so I'm just finishing up the, uh, the armature of the human here, uh, the uh, male. And um, I'm getting ready to uh, put it onto a board uh, for mounting. And here I've mounted it on the board. And uh, so that's uh, the starting of your armature. Now, when you do a female, you're going to make the hips wider. You're going to make the shoulders narrower. I wouldn't make much difference as far as the heights goes. Uh, if you want to make her the same height as a man, that's that works. But the fem female will be a little different in measurements than a man. Um, the wrist on a armature should fall just about where the groin is, and that's where I've got it. And the bottom of the elbow will fall in the bottom of the uh, rib cage. There's a lot of uh, material on, online for uh, creating uh, proportional figures and I would suggest that you do a lot of research. It takes, buy all the art books that you can buy, find on, on anatomy and on drawing the human figure because everything you gather will just increase your knowledge of what you're doing. All right, that's uh, going to do it for the armature of a human and uh, the uh, horse and as well as the uh, dog armature. I hope you've gained some insightful knowledge from all this. It's uh, something that I've been working on for nearly 50 years. My first armatures were... It, it, they cost me twenty, thirty dollars uh, to do an armature, and that was back in the sixties, when when uh, four hundred bucks a month was what you made in a living. So I had to figure out some way of doing armatures much cheaper. Now, as far as the support for this, uh, you could use a, uh, a, pea, a wooden dowel like I did it with the, the horse, um, and there's different ways of setting that up as well and each figure and each design is going to take a different kind of uh, support. You can even get a, a thicker wire uh, to act as uh, your support as well. All right. Well here's the segment there where I tell you how to purchase your 
and streaming video off of Vimo. This is just a temporary page right now because I haven't created the nine reviews of my current instructional videos uh, yet. And that's so, so this is just a temporary page just to show you an example of what you're going to see when you come to this page. There's a link below my daily YouTube videos that will take you to this page. And here you will see uh, a three, all nine videos, but I don't have them on here right now because uh, I haven't edited them yet <laughs> or created them yet. But uh, there'll be nine videos uh, on this page, right in this area here. And uh, you'll be able to scroll down the page and, and, and review them all. Um, up here to the right is a drop-down menu. And will be listed all my videos. I just clicked a little arrow, down arrow up here. And it will be listed all my instructional videos here. And uh, it will, you click on the one you want to purchase. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, say I want to purchase that one, add to cart. And it's, it's all through PayPal. And I've got two videos that I've got listed here already on my uh, PayPal pre-order and uh, up here in the upper right there is a continue shopping and I can drop down the menu and click on another video add to cart and automatically you got the uh, third choice. I've already made two choices and now I got a third choice. And then once you get that done, you click on the PayPal uh, button to continue uh, to the uh, checkout. That's how you purchase my videos. As soon as, I, as soon as I receive notification from PayPal that you've uh, purchased a video, I put together a uh, email to you with the link or with the title of the uh, video as well as the link to the Vimo video copy of it and the password. Now, I also uh, inform you up here, keep this email I send you or print it out so you'll always have the link and the password for the video you purchased. You can watch it on Vimo as often as you want, as long as you have this. Thank you so much for your purchase. Of course, if you lose the email, you can always contact me and I can replace it. But it, uh, the, the receipt for your purchase is here and um, the link to the video, like I just told you, is right there. And um, it's very easy. You just click on that link and then it'll ask you for the password before you can start watching the video. And it's just so simple. And as soon as I get to, in, or I can, I see the, that you purchased something, uh, I get the video out to you and you have it within seconds. It is so much easier than the old way that I did it by DVD, which I can't do anymore. All right. That's how you purchase and how you receive your instructional videos or video. Well, that's it. And I hope this has been helpful to you in making your decision. But wait, I have a great deal for you. And it's listed in the uh, list of videos that you can order. The deal is, if you order all nine, you get three unlisted videos that are great videos. I just don't have room on PayPal to list them, so I have to keep them in reserve. But if you order all nine of my videos at one time, you get three extra videos that are unlisted. Great videos. And uh, I think you'd really enjoy them. 
and they're free. The three, not the nine. <laughs> All right, that's uh, going to be it. Uh, I'm glad you watched uh, this video, and I hope you found it interesting. Good day, everybody.